Welcome to Essential Space Holding Skills for Fathers. This video I decided to make to distill as much of the distinctions and tools and practices that I have been using for becoming a space holder in my family. And before I get too far ahead, what is space holding? Space holding is the capacity that you have to hold space for something. And this might sound a little bit like obvious, but it's like you are currently holding space for something right now. And if you start asking this question more and more, you start finding this answer or this information that pops from the space. What is being, what is being held space for right now? And you can hold space for many different things. You can hold space for, for listening. You can hold space for transformation. You can hold space for discovery. You can hold space for landing distinctions. Uh, you can hold space for uh, having, uh, for shit, for having low drama happening in a space. And we'll get a little bit more into that uh, in, the trans, in, the, in the transcourse of this video. And for now, I want to just land that the importance of space holding as a father is that if, if you're a father who is wanting to create uh, new ways of relating in the world, who is at the edge, who you, if you're a father who are not, you are not exactly in the center of modern culture, that you are not subscribing to the to to the mainstream uh, script that everybody is following, that most people are following. Uh, uh, if you're a father in this realm, these space holding skills are crucial because you you are wanting to create something new. You are exploring. You are essentially you're tra trailblazing into a territory where not many others have gone. Perhaps nobody has ever gone into that territory where you are trying to trace place to. And without the skill to hold space, you, you cannot get there. You cannot hold space or create a space for something that is not there yet. Or you cannot, yeah, like hold this thing so that it, it gets delivered, it comes from wherever it's at in your lineage, in your archetypal lineage or in your resources to come into the world. So space holding skills is um, a soft, it's a, it's a soft uh, skill, meaning that it's not as simple as frying an egg. If you're trying to learn how to fry an egg, you can use quickly verified. You, you, you can crack the egg, put the egg on it, and then you can have the result like, okay, it's a fried egg. And this, is, this will be a hard skill. Another example of hard skill is, is um, carpentry, for example, or mm, cooking or play, playing music. Even it can be a hard skill, but that, that's a little bit more on the soft skill side. But space holding skill is a soft skill, meaning that it takes uh, a, bit of, a bit more time. It takes this like trial and error and discovery process to find out uh, like how are you holding space for things and what is it that you're holding space for. Uh, it takes time to get feedback from from the world about how you're holding space and and what are the results that you are creating with with your the space that you are holding? So from this place, it's not a thing that you're gonna learn from one thing to another. So even in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some distinctions and practices and examples. And and it's not going to be like this is not gonna be the end of your journey. This is merely like an introduction or a, a practice that some very awesome distinctions that you can start practicing in your day-to-day -day life that will start creating that space inside of you for becoming a better space holder or for starting to hold space for things that you didn't know you could hold space before. So 
uh, yeah, becoming a space holder is also this coming into touch, into closer touch with reality. Um, 10 years ago, when I first started becoming uh, an edge worker, when I, I quit my job and I went into this place, I'm like there's something else is possible in my life. It's, my life wasn't fulfilling anymore. So I went on to do something else. I went traveling and I started journaling more, creating music and drawing. And I started seeing that there was something emerging inside of me that wanted to come into this world. And this was my, my edge working. I, I was seeing the, the things that I wanted to see manifested into this world. And, uh, and at 10, like six, seven years after, after doing that and like having all of these great ideas and great conceptions and trying to bring in them into the world, I wasn't able to bring them into the world. There was something that was blocking me. There was something like the ideas will not get past the conception phase where I was imagining them, I was writing them, I was seeing them, I was talking with them about, uh, with people, but they were not transcending that phase of, ah, like here is the, the, the vision or here it is. And this was the feedback that I was getting from reality. Uh, after eight years, I, bec uh, yeah, I became a father seven years ago. And uh, five years into my, my role of being a father, I hit this crash button where I was trying to create community, create teamwork, create transformational spaces. Um, and, and it wasn't happening. Like things were just like getting started and crashing getting started and crashing. And this was the feedback that I was getting from reality. And I was able to get in touch with that feedback because I started practicing my, practicing, I, I shifted my identity to becoming a space holder. And I said, I am a space holder. I am a space holder for a new culture to emerge, or I am a space holder for transformational spaces to exist. And, and by, doing this commitment and this trend, this shift of identity, I started getting this real feedback from the universe that I could use that the things that I was doing were not working. So the journey of becoming a space holder is a way of getting in touch with reality and getting in touch with that feedback that life is already giving you. Uh, another uh, reason or another big reason why you want to become a space holder as a as a father is because there has been there has been patterns that have been repeated along uh, many generations and these patterns when they they keep repeating from generation to generation and you probably experienced this when you became a father there was something inside of you that perhaps said something like uh, i will never want to be like my father uh, this, my father did this thing to me, and I will never want to do that to my children. And and so the the purpose of becoming a space holder is that you can hold space for something else to happen, without going into that journey of uh, getting in touch with reality, becoming holding space for something. You're gonna end up repeating consciously or unconsciously, and in one way or another, the patterns that were passed down to you from your parents and your grandparents. Uh, uh, for me, I remember being like, I, I never wanna be like, um, yeah, like a, I, I wanna be more present with my children. Uh, my, my dad, that was this way that he was, um, he was there and he said he was an awesome dad and there was this way that he would laugh about me yeah, and he wasn't there with me fully. And I said, I will never want to be like that with my children. Like I wanna take my children seriously. I wanna like listen to them. I wanna be there with them. And, and I realized after being in father, my father role for a few years that I, I was sounding like my dad. I, I was surprised, I was like, that, that sounded like my dad. Uh, when I would speak and I was screaming like my dad and telling things and repeating the same things that my dad did uh, unconsciously. Like these things will just come out in these moments of stress 
when I will be, um, yeah, like trigger emotionally trigger or when I will be uh, insecure about my, my role as a father or my role as a man or as a partner. And this mm, automatic reactions will come up in, in my space. So becoming a space holder, it, may, it puts that in front of you, like it puts it right in front of you and you can escape um, the reality that you're creating and that you are repeating those patterns and that you actually don't want to repeat those patterns. That you, uh, So as a space holder for uh, a new culture to emerge, uh, you want to work directly with these patterns and see like what's going on here. This is uh, holding space for your transformation journey. All right, so um, I want to share a little bit about who I am and where this is from, what I'm going to be sharing in this video. Yeah, and I, I hope that gives you a, like a, a round perspective about holding space and the importance of holding space. If, if you don't, uh, without holding space, if you don't have holding space skills, like everything is going to keep dropping, like things are just going to keep dropping in your relationship or in your work life or with your partner or with your children in your family space in projects. And, and this is really a, a super skill that I, I believe that it has been lost for men to get in touch with what it means to hold space. So I hope that gives you like this importance of what you're here for, why you clicked on this video, why you you are watching this. And so I started this journey of space holding about two or three years ago when I hit a rock bottom in my relational space with my, my family. Uh, I was completely broke uh, with financially uh, and emotionally. I had messes, energetic messes, uh, emotional messes, uh, messes in my physical space. I was not taking care of myself. I was, um, yeah, just like, like things were just like at, at an end of the road where things were like absolutely not working. And the universe was giving me this quick feedback. Like, like, this is it. Uh, I discovered a website uh, called startover.xyz. And this website opened up so many doorways for me uh, to dive into some things that I haven't been able to explain before or to say before. It, these websites were opening up, saying things that I never been able to say before or that I never heard anybody else saying or putting with such clarity. So it had um, distinctions about village building, about relating with your partner, about tools, about being centered and sourcing magic into your life, uh, about growing up and healing and evolving. And it didn't just have information. It was like a, a playground. This is a playground. Start over direct, what you say is a playground for uh, for adults to start getting into initiatory processes through experimenting and practices to grow their capacity to hold space for different things, to grow their their responsibility level. And even so when I when I encountered this website, I was like, oh my goodness, this is gold, this is precious. Like I like I, I was immersed in that website, which is actually over 500 websites, by the way. It was 400 websites when I started it two years ago. And right now it has grown to over 600 websites because it has been growing. And I became super immersed and in love with this world, this game. Uh, and from that journey, I, I discovered the context of the world of possibility management, which is the uh, Toddware, which is a, a language for this new culture, these new cultures that are emerging. So it's, a, it's not just language, but it's like programming, like a way to re reprogram yourself from this uh, 
thing, this trend that has been happening for generations, they call the patriarchy, um, to reprogram and unprogram yourself, like let all of that decompose, all of the stuff that has been happening and allow your being to have a new possibility of being in the world and actually allow your being to become an actual adult, uh, not just a, an adult body, but to have adult emotions, adult, um, uh, adult inner structure and, and to show up in the world as an adult. Um, and this, this website opened up that possibility for me two, two years ago. Um, I think it's been more than two years ago now. And I've, I've been part of different teams that, that come from there. This is a worldwide community. And there is always different events and stuff happening in there. So I, came, I became part of teams. And this is where my journey as a space holder began. And it was like truly transformational. The stuff that happens there, it was in, insanely transformational uh, to the point where after a, a lot of these ideas that I have been brewing for the last 10 years, they now had a place to land. Like I had a structure, I had like this place where it could finally land and make sense. And, oh, here is where the experiments go. Here is where the website, how is the structure? Here is the distinctions. And it gave me this possibility for landing all of these things that were coming out through me. And, and I'm still in the midst of change of this and now have grown some capacity, more capacity to hold space for, for my voice to come through, for my clarity to speak, for being in partnership, for being heartbroken, for hitting rock bottom and, and for creating transformation spaces, for uh, delivering distinctions, so it's been a journey of discovering all of the different parts where I can speak from and, and to hold space from that. And right now, this is why I'm sharing all of this stuff with you because I want more fathers to have access to this thing that I've discovered, uh, which is not precisely just the world of start over, uh, but it is the, the practices that, that came from there and the context, the context that is clearly held in there. So a lot of the things that I'm going to be sharing here in this video are from the context of possibility management, which is an open source uh, copyleft software, which you can go right now and access access in your website. You can go to startover.xyz and you get access to 500, 600 websites with amazing distinctions. Not just amazing. This is like stuff that I've never seen anywhere else uh, that is really uh, it just reflects something that it creates a possibility for humanity to create something else in the world. And this is all open source, by the way. Um, I want to have a warning about this for what I'm going to be sharing next is that to that uh, the stuff that I'm going to be sharing is probably going to take you out of your comfort zone. Uh, probably already there is some things that I've been sharing that have taken you out of your comfort zone and, and it gets to, to you feel your edge. And it's great uh, that you keep your attention on, on that edge and that you keep navigating and being yourself in that edge. So this is going to be this is beyond the edge of your comfort zone. That's where transformation happens. When you're staying in your comfort zone and comfortable, we call this the marshmallow zone. Uh, that nothing happens. Your, your your commitment is to stay there in this place of you that is comfortable. You don't have enough pain to change. So this will work. This video and the next part of what I'm going to be sharing it will work. It works only if you have enough pain about this. If you have enough pain about your relationship not working or uh, your dynamic in your family not working with your children, for example, or the, your life's work, your projects and your dreams are not materializing and you have enough pain about this. If you have enough pain about seeing how your underworld is eating up the space uh, of intimacy in your relationship, if you have enough pain about your uh, yeah, like your your world essentially staying in the same and not changing, then 
keep going like this is this is the fuel you can use that pain to move forward you can use that pain to transform to transform it into something else. But if you don't have enough pain, if you're in your comfort zone, if you're comfortable enough, like if you're okay, then like nothing will change. Uh, you might not be ready for this. It might be in a few weeks or in a few months, maybe in a few years uh, that uh, this work might be uh, become available for you through being in touch with the pain of how it's not working for you. <clears throat> So there is, uh, there is no method. I only prepare like a little bit of a kind of like a structure for this. And um, there is not really like a method, like this is the way, this is how it's gonna go um, and follow these steps. It's really an authentic, unique, initiatory process into adulthood for you uh, and for everyone. So this will, open up the discovery for some doorways. This will paint some doorways for you to, to go to your next step, to, to paint maybe a few distinctions that land here and there for you that create this possibility for something else to come into life. Right on. What else? Okay, so I, I broke this down, this space holding in, in three different parts uh, for this video. Uh, the first part is holding space for you, holding space for yourself. Uh, the second part, uh, and this is yeah, like about like holding your own, holding your own being. Like, how do you hold yourself? How do you carry yourself? Like, what are you holding space for? How do you hold space for your own uh, humanness, for your own human journey, for your own transformation, uh, uh, for your own journey? The second part is holding space for your partner, uh, which is about ex extending this holding space. How do you hold space now for this partner, the mother of two children, or it could even be a, a co-parent. Maybe you guys are not together anymore working as partners, but there is some sort of uh, partnership that you have in working to raise your children. And, and how do you hold space for your partner? And the third part is holding space for your children. So this is gonna be three different parts that are focused around holding space, uh, essential skills for space holding as a father. So let's get going. When you, what does it mean to hold, hold space for you? Holding space for you is going to the like starting starting from zero starting from from this place of, of you uh, where where you are in reality where you are in in the space and you are going through a, a journey or you have an experience that you're going through and and the there is a, a there is a basic practice that uh, allows you to see, okay, as a space holder, what are you holding space for? Uh, where, where is your attention? Holding space is so much about your attention. And when your attention is in, is in certain places, it creates certain results. So uh, holding space for yourself, it starts with bringing your attention to yourself, where you have your, your attention a, 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 your attention in your being, when you have uh, awareness of your body, awareness of, of your, your physical body and also your other different bodies. I say different bodies because we have five different bodies. So we're gonna go do this right now. We're gonna start uh, with shifting your attention, shifting where your attention is, so you can start this journey of holding space for yourself. So you have five bodies. You, you have a, a physical body, which is your, your bones, your muscles, your, your tissue, your hair, your skin, uh, even the blood. This is your physical body. And it, this body has a, a, a quality, has certain foods that, that feed it. And as you are listening to this, 
what, what, how are you showing up in your physical body? What is your physical body saying? Where is tension? Where is there any pain in your body? How is the gravity affecting your body? How are your feet, uh, are your feet touching the earth? Um, where can you feel gravity right now? And this is your, these are some questions to bring your attention to your physical body. You also have a mental body, which is your, the center of your mental body is in your head, in your, in your mind. So this is all the, the parts that are your thoughts, your ideas, uh, your concepts, anything that's around your beliefs, uh, assumptions, expectations, stories, all of these things that are happening in your mental body. And you can notice it right now. How are you showing up? What is happening right now in your mental body? And notice where, how are you showing up in your mental body? What is showing up up there? And be with it. Be with this mental body. This is your, your thoughts. Yeah, like this flow of ideas and words that come in, that, that come to you and the center of your mental body is in your head. You also have a uh, emotional body and the center of your emotional body is in your heart. This is your feelings. These are the, the feelings that you have right now. You are always feeling something. You're, you're always, we're always feeling something. Uh, you can be feeling, and uh, in this map, in this world that we're into right now, we work with a map of four feelings. Uh, these are four feelings that are this basic manifestation of your feelings, sort of like the basic colors or these primary colors. And you have the red, blue, and green, red, blue, and yellow. And these colors, these feelings, when they mix up together, they create the, the whole other variety of colors. But uh, for this practice and for exploring this territory of your feelings, we're going to work with the basic four feelings, which is anger, sadness, fear, and joy. So you experience, like, how, how is your emotional body showing up right now? How, which one of those are you feeling the strongest? And, and how, how does it show up in you? What happens when you start noticing, when you bring your attention to your feelings? What happens inside of you? And this is a way of bringing your attention also to your feelings body. This is a body because it moves and it has a shape and it has a quality to it. And as we're going into this process, you notice the quality, the different qualities of your emotional body. And each one of these territories in your emotional body has different qualities to it. And one of the first parts of space holding, one of the first skills is learning how to inner navigate. Learning how to inner navigate your feelings so that you can tell when you're feeling sad, when you're feeling angry, uh, when you're feeling scared, or when you're feeling joy. And learning to detect uh, if there is, if they are mixed together, if there is sadness and anger mixed together, or or if it's an old emotion, something from the past, something that happened in the past that is triggering you right now, and having that distinction to create that navigation, we call this inner navigation or inner navigation skills, where you develop this skill to detect what's happening inside of you and move move with it move with your sadness uh, find the information that your sadness is giving you and and there's actually quite a bit in there quite a bit of the journey to become a space holder is about learning how to inner navigate uh, without the inner navigation uh, you're gonna be not be able to hold space for anything on uh, uh, or you can hold space for, for some things until you get triggered once you get triggered you're you're not holding space anymore um, and that's not always true but it's like unconsciously triggered or reactive if you get reactive 
uh, then the space is not held. Uh, so we're gonna go a little bit into this part of holding your feelings. And for right now, we're gonna keep going into this, shifting your attention into this place where you can start holding space for yourself and holding space for you. So we're going through your physical body, we're going through your mental body, and we're going through your emotional body in your center. And we're going into the, your energetic body. Uh, your energetic body is, has a quality that it can move. It, has, it can move through time and space. It can be in different, it can go to abstract things. It can go to, it can be in the past. Your energetic body can move into the future. It can move and be with somebody. Uh, it can, it, it can like fly away into the, the other side of the universe. It can, so your, your energetic body is like this mass of energy that, uh, that is you, that, that you, that is part of you that, that it can move and that it can split and that it can reunite. So for this exploration, start noticing where your energetic body is. Notice if it's somewhere slightly in the past, or if it got um, if it got hooked somewhere, if it stays somewhere, or if it's uh, in a in a memory that happened many years ago about something, or if it's um, perhaps it's somewhere in the future. It's like, oh, when is this thing gonna end? Or what am I gonna do next? What am I gonna have for dinner tonight? Uh, uh, what am I gonna say in this conversation? All of these things, or it might be in your children. Like, what are my children doing? Like, oh, this is. Where, where is my partner doing or my partner is, is angry about this thing about me and and you start noticing your energetic body and that it, and start using your intention to bring that energetic body into a small here and now you now you're gonna go a little bit into active mode and use your intention to bring that energy and that attention to a small here and now and bring it to form a, a ball about this size in front of your eyes, in front of your face. So wherever it's at, just keep noticing, noticing where your attention is, noticing your energy. So the one key here is that wherever your attention is, that energy follows. So if you put your attention on this dot here, automatically energy is going to follow that. So you uh, notice where your attention is and start letting the attention bring in your energy to form a ball about this size in front of you. And, and this is a, a constant thing. Just like keep bringing it, keep noticing and keep bringing it wherever it is. Take deep breaths, take deep breaths and keep bringing it, allowing the, the energy ball to get more and more condensed with more and more of your energy. And bringing in bringing in anything from wherever it's at to this small moment here and now so imagine a cycle of three seconds like nothing more into the future or into the past than three seconds so just these three seconds so it's like one two three one two three one two three one two three it's like small here and now we are here land your energy into this space come into this present call into this very precise moment of where these words that you're listening to and noticing your physical body your energetic body your mental body your emotional body and just let that ball of energy start getting more and more dense once you have that ball of energy bring that ball of energy into your being like drag it using your hands and your intention and bring it down into alignment with your physical body, with the center of your physical body. And the center of your physical body is located three, three fingers under your belly button in between your hips. This is your, your gravitational center of your physical body. So if you put yourself on a balance, this is where your center is. So you're gonna bring that energy ball of your all of your attention all of your life force and put it into your center of your physical body and you let it land in there you let it kind of like quick like merge so that your energy is inhabiting your physical body and you're gonna see this is a 
experiential distinction. This is not a, an idea or an imagination. It's not a concept. This you're gonna feel the change, the difference when you do when you align your energy and you bring your energy and you put it in your in your physical center. And this is when you are inhabiting your body with your energy. And this is a way of becoming present, becoming one with the here and now, coming in touch with reality, with where you're at right now. Take a deep breath and just keep letting that sensation be real. Be for there for a moment with this sensation. If you've been following this, you're gonna get a distinction. There is gonna be some different things emerging, more noticing of your body, something that you haven't noticed before you all of a sudden you start noticing, perhaps it's in your physical body, perhaps it's in your emotional body, perhaps it's in your mental body. And you keep noticing this and keep bringing this attention. And this is the quality of being center. You are centered because now your energetic center is inhabiting your physical center and you are in, in your center. And from this place, there is so much that is possible. You are with you, you are inhabiting your body and this is a, a powerful thing. That is, it is even beyond words. So you can just be there and sense your body I'm not gonna say anything for a few seconds so you can sense that. So this is the first step of holding space for yourself. This is the first step, your initial point, and this is one of the key practices that I'm gonna encourage you to keep doing after you watch this video and for the next few months, for the next year, for the next two, three years, continue practicing this. Even for the next week, put a timer on your phone where you remind yourself to center yourself. Or you can take a few seconds uh, every few hours to bring your attention to a small here and now and bring it in to your physical center so that you can inhabit more your center. You can use your your clicker for this, you can get this notification, you click yourself, say, okay, bring in your attention and, and bring in your energetic body, your energetic center, the mass of your energy, whatever is at, into your physical center. This is something that the more you practice, the more intuitive it becomes and the stronger this practice becomes. Okay. After this, we're gonna step into the next step, becoming grounded. So now you are, you are center. You gain this capacity to be center in your experience. And this is the first step of holding space for yourself. The next step is grounding. Grounding yourself, grounding this energy to Gaia. And for that, you use your clicker one one more time you click like that and you declare that you have a grounding cord you declare a grounding cord from your center the center that ball that is in your physical center now down creating a cord to the center of the earth so go ahead and do this right now you snap your fingers and declare you have a grounding cord from your center to the center of the earth This cord has a certain quality, has about, declare it about five centimeters long, that is quite thick, so it can like really ground heavy energy and, and it has this two, two way, two way communication or two way passage. So you can send and receive energy and you can also send and receive uh, information. So you receive energy and information from Gaia, from the earth, which is where you're standing right now. We're sitting right now on this amazing planet that is a living being, and we have a natural attraction to it. We are grounded in this place, and you can test this by jumping. If you try to jump, you're naturally brought back to the earth. This is your grounding core in action. 
and this is how you can test that this this is a your connection to the earth and she's holding you right now and she's creating everything around you like all of these trees and all of the fruits and all of the food to nurture you and sustain this experience so creating this grounding core is a way of connecting with this bigger being where you are inhabiting and actually tap into the intelligence uh, and the information that it has that she can provide or that it can provide there is also a, a color you can imagine to make this more visceral and clear what is the color of your grounding core and imagine the color don't just think about it you can imagine it like see there is a grounding core between your center and the center of the earth and you declare the grounding color at the count of three one two three mine is colored purple and this is the experience now of being grounded you can at any moment if you have any excess of energy in your field anything is happening around you that you have too much energy or you don't know what your job is for example and you can click your fingers and any energy that is not yours that it doesn't belong to you and that is not for this space you just let it flush down the grounding core into the earth it is a way of recycling the energy the excess of energy that you have inside of you so go ahead and do that and if there is any energy that is around you that is that is not it doesn't belong to you the third step and the, the final basic step uh, for holding space for yourself is your bubble of space declaring your bubble of space so for this again you use your clicker to create a disruption in the soundscape of the space and declaring uh, that you declaring your bubble of space so go ahead and click and declare your bubble of space which is your magnetic field this is your energetic egg this is the the cocoon that that you're in that separates you individuates you from the rest of the world it doesn't mean that you are separate from the world or that you are uh, like uh, independent from the world and in, in on the contrary this is how you are connected to the world and you are connected through that world through this uh, layer to this uh, fine layer this uh, your bubble of space is the the resonance your resonance field your magnetic field that gets created from the movement of your different energy from your different bodies from the movement of your heart the movement of your stomach even the movement of your lungs the movement of your throat when you're speaking the movement of your thoughts and your mind uh, and the movement of your roots too all of this it creates a, a magnetic field around you and this is creates a distinction between you and the rest of the world between your thoughts and somebody else's thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your concepts, your stories and beliefs, your limitations, your blockages, your holes, uh, all of this stuff is in your bubble of space. And it, and you can, the more you start, um, the more you start going into this practice, the more you can uh, distinguish the your own bubble of space start you can start noticing uh if there is balls if there is holes inside of your bubble of space or if there is uh, uh walls that uh, keep you separate or if your bubble of space is very far away or if it's too close to you and you can start taking control of this by clicking and declaring your bubble of space so go ahead and click your fingers declare your bubble of space and this is your third step now you are center you are grounded and you have your bubble of space and this is the the very beginning of holding space for yourself and I'm, i especially took a long time for this because it's really the basic foundations this is from here is from where you can start holding space for something else from here is from where you can actually have enough contact with reality and with the space 
that you can start becoming a space holder. So this is going to be the practice that is going to change the way that you show up in the in the world. Perhaps if you have been following these instructions and this guidance, you have you're already feeling a difference in how you are showing up. So take a picture of yourself right now, an energetic picture, and and say like make a commitment now to to show up. I want that that you will show up in the world in a more present way, that you will show up in this shape, that you will show up more centered, more grounded, and more in your in your presence, in your identity, or in your bubble of space, in your power. Uh, having a, a, a clarity about your bubble of space is what allows you to be in the space without enmeshing yourself with others, without taking on other people's problems as if they are your problems or taking on other people's emotions. So especially if you're an empath or somebody who is easily... Um, moved by other people's feelings and emotions having practicing your bubble of space it really starts creating that that gap where you can say that's that's your shit uh, this is my shit um, and then you can have more clarity navigating from from that place so <sighs> welcome yeah like really this is a we could go on there is a practice spaces for just centering and for doing exactly what we just did uh there is this is a practice to go deeper into and for right now this is it we are this is called first position becoming center grounded and bubble so you just keep practicing that put a timer in your phone where you get a reminder every a few hours and go through this process uh it, you only you, you could take a few seconds or a minute to to do it to bring your attention and do the steps so now that you're here, you can start in a different place. So it's like you're here, now you're present, you have access to your own experience. You're no longer like enmeshed with uh, your, your partner's problems and your parents' problems. Your mom is calling you uh, and your father is expecting you to go for a visit. And then your, your brother is saying like, hey, how's it going, man? And you have all of these people's energy in your field when you go into first position like this gets cleared out and it opens space for more clear navigation of like more authentic navigation where you're actually navigating from from your while you are holding space for yourself okay so i want to tell you one uh one skill that changed my relating space uh this is we're gonna be moving now into uh holding space for your partner. And this actually also covers up holding space for your children, this skill, uh, because it's a basic skill of communication. And I'm not gonna take too much time on this, uh, but this skill is called completion loops. And, and it's about completing communication. And it's about how communication works. Uh, most of the communication that we know in the world nowadays, like you see it in TVs, in cartoons, in the way that people talk at the supermarket or at the coffee shop, start paying attention to this because you're going to start seeing it everywhere. Uh, the, the most common communication that happens or type of conversation is neurotic speaking. The type of speaking is neurotic speaking. So the people speaking neurotically from their head or from wherever their center is at, their energetic center might be in the future or in the past, and they're just speaking into the space without any awareness of, of what they're saying uh, or without any awareness of what the other one is saying. Um, one moment. So now that you have your your center, uh, you're gonna be able to start noticing these different types of speaking. You're gonna be walking around the street and noticing how people are talking at each other. They're not talking with each other. And this is because communication is not happening. Communication happens when a message is sent and then it is received on the other end and it's reflected back to their sender, the person that sent it, and the person that sent it confirms that the message was received. This is the, at the basic how communication happens. So you have one person here sending a message, say uh, A, 
A, person A is sending a message to person B. Person B receives the message and it, and then it says like, is this the message that you sent? And then person A, who is the original sender of the message says, yes, that was the message that I sent. And that was like, when I hear that yes, that means that the communication was successful. Communication happened. If you hear, is this the message that you sent? No, that's not the message that I sent. Bam, communication did not happen. And this is so far out there from what we are at the form of communication when I see uh, the main, mainstream world, when they say the world out there. Um, so uh, this is the next practice that I would encourage you to practice with yourself, uh, with your partner and with your children. And at first, this is the technology of completion loops. So you can call it that, you can say, I'm, I'm practicing completion loops or I'm uh, experimenting with completion loops for the next two weeks, for the next month or two months, become an experimenter of completion loops uh, so that you can start experiencing communication happening in your relationships and even with, inside of yourself. And the, the way that this works is that no, no other new communication is started before a communication is completed. So if this person is sending a message saying, um, I would like you to wash the dishes. This person can, cannot start a new thread until the until that thread has been completed. So you don't say, I said I was going to wash the dishes. Uh, I said I was going to wash the dishes. Uh, that's a completely different thread, like communication bah, already didn't happen. So you're going to hear this. Nah. So make sure that you complete one thread before the other. And I will send some resources so that you can uh, have more information about this. Uh, uh, and so you can have like really like a few more distinctions about this. Uh, so this is the, comp the, the technology of completion loops and it works great for children where your children is having a tantrum when you this is the basic foundations if there was something that you will get from this about how to hold space for the children is completing communication completing their communication so that whatever they're saying uh there is landing somewhere at first this process is going to be a little bit robotic like uh, people are might start giving you the feedback like why are you saying what i'm saying or something like that uh, and at first it's going to be that robotic. So just get that as a feedback that, okay, it's working, but you need a little bit more. You start working on your finesse. Maybe you're giving a completion loop in a moment when it wasn't necessary, but at first make it robotic, get it to that point where people are telling you, giving you that feedback of like, why are you saying the same thing that I'm saying or something like that. Uh, the other thing that I got about this is that do, don't expect people, especially your children, to know this or to do this for you. Don't expect your children to complete your communication for you. Don't expect your partner to complete your communication for you. You are the one that is going on this journey and that is learning these skills. Uh, so you are the one that's gaining this possibility for creating communication, uh, intimacy happening in your relationship. So make sure that that you are that you do is that you take this on for you as an experiment that you are doing i am a completion loops experimenter and that you are experimenting from this and and then when you get the feedback from the back of like what why are you saying the same thing that that i just said um you can say oh thank you for your feedback or uh or you can say i'm a i'm an experimenter loop i'm a experimenter of completion loops and that's it and and yeah, just like keep it, do not let it go into an expectation of like, oh, this person is neurotic speaking to me or they're not listening to me. Just get it as a feedback that you are doing this as a service for others or you're doing this as a way of taking a stand for communication to happen around you, for you to be in a place where communication can happen. And this is transformational. This transform my relating space with my partner, with my other partners and with my children and with myself. 
this tool in itself is a golden piece that like you're gonna hit in a, a few months in a few years uh, you're gonna get back to me and say like that changed my life that that was life changing and i hope that you get this and that you practice it and that you take a stand for it uh, and that you check out the resources too so that you can deepen up a little bit more about what what this is all right uh, we're running a little bit out of time. I want to like almost start wrapping this up so that it doesn't get too long. I gave you this, the skills of the first position, going to first position where you're, and to start holding space for yourself. And now giving you the, the skill of completing communication. At first, it's completing communication, uh, it takes practice. It's not going to happen from one day to another. You're going to see that um like for example when i when i started doing this um yeah my, my i started practicing with my partner and and it will came a moment when it, it wouldn't happen like something will happen that she will say something i will get pissed off i will get like angry that she was saying that thing and that she and i would not be able to listen to her or to complete back her communication i would say my own thing like uh like for example she would she would say she said mm, uh i like i i feel used and like you're not seeing me you're you're behaving like a child and nothing is working it's not working for me and nothing is changing you keep doing the same thing over and over uh, and you're showing up like a child. I don't want to take care of you. I'm not your mother. Uh, and I, when I received this information, I, I at first I got triggered. Like this happened years a year year ago or years ago, and I became like, yeah, well that's not that's not what it is for me. Uh, for me, I'm I'm doing my best. I'm like so already there. I became reactive. I became reactive to what she was saying, and I was not in communication with her something else was happening in the space that was not communication that there was not love happening so this is the it's not going to change from one day to another and when you notice that when you notice that you're not able to complete her communication this is gold because this is the point where you see that you are hooked and what this means energetically is that part of your energy energy Part of your energetic body left your body and it went into your partner's body or it went into your partner's uh, energy uh, so uh, already there you are not holding space already there uh, you are hooked so you stop holding space for what you were holding space so there's nothing wrong with this don't beat yourself up about this uh, and the next skill that i want to tell you about is the skill of becoming unhookable and and it starts with that research of seeing when you are when you get hooked energetically to some things um in that case that i just painted i became hooked to the to the to the words that that my partner was throwing she was sending these these words and i i became hooked to that story to the story that she has and i i became hooked that i need to be right and i i am right and that i'm I'm not a bad person and I need to prove myself. I need to show her that I am not what she thinks I am. Uh, so already in this, there is a, a dynamic that, uh, that experientially you start noticing when you are hooked. And, and the, the first practice, uh, as you become, as you get to this place or as you start noticing when you're getting hooked and uh, finding uh, find that 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 picture you're gonna get a picture inside of you like oh okay i'm hooked and maybe at first you're not gonna notice and this is from what happened for me like you're not gonna notice for weeks you're not gonna notice maybe for a few days that you are hooked you're gonna be angry resentful your arms crossed you're not looking you're avoiding each other you are uh, ignoring her or like going about it in your in your head about it or perhaps you are complaining to uh, to your friends about her stuff like that 
I don't know, whatever you will do, but it might be a few days before you notice that, oh shit, I'm hooked. And you're going to notice that because your energy constantly keeps going to her. Your attention constantly keeps going to her. I was like, oh, what is she thinking? What, what is she doing? What if she does this? Well, oh, I don't want her to think that. I, and, and your energy is constantly, it's going to be feel like a hole in your, in your bubble of space. Like, and energy is just leaking out unconsciously. Or sometimes it might feel like a, like a tentacle. Like there is a tentacle or an energetic string uh, or tube uh, from your bubble of space to her bubble of space. Uh, and, and also, if you are in the next, in the vicinity, if you are next to each other, it, it might feel like your bubble is in her bubble. This might also be the case. And, and when your bubble is in her bubble, that's game over for holding space uh, for... Uh, uh, regenerative cultures or for holding space for clarity uh, for holding space for uh, adulthood is, is game over so you start taking a note of these uh, energetic imprints or signatures where you are there is something going on a resentment or a hook or a story you're gonna actually feel like a hook and you can uh, the first step uh, when you notice that you're hooked is admitting that you are hooked. This is the, the first step. Like the, it's not like taking it out and I'm hooked saying like, I, I am hooked. And this is the first step and allowing yourself to be with the pain of being hooked, allowing yourself to, for the feelings that come up when you are hooked. Um, and this, this, this is going to take you into this next part of exploring your feelings and, finding your feelings uh, and actually learning this part of inner navigating where you can say, okay, I'm hooked. I'm angry because she said this thing and I didn't like it. And, and, and I'm angry because I took it personally and I, I'm doing all of this thing that I already know that I, I blame her for it and I didn't listen to her. So you're going to start like going into this process of like, okay, I'm hooked. And, and you're gonna try finding when do you get hooked? How did you get hooked? How did it happen? What was the hook? How did you bite it? It's gonna be like a fish, like, oh, you are hooked. And you're gonna start noticing and and then the more you practice this, this, this uh, skill of becoming unhookable, you're gonna start finding the, the quality of the hook, how big the hook was, who was throwing it, what, what was the words that were said that hooked you? And you're going to start becoming better at not being hooked. And this is not going to happen from one day to another. Again, this is a journey uh, of space holding. So I invite you, yeah, like, well, commit yourself. Commit yourself to being a, a somebody that can be unhooked. Because when you're hooked, you are not holding space. And, and this is actually when you're hooked, you might find that you want to numb yourself. There, there's going to be a pain about it. There's going to be a, because there is turmoil, there is stuff, and you might tend to go to the, your numbing strategies. So that's a little bit going in, it's a bigger territory now. But this is the essential skills of space holding for fathers is coming into your center, uh, grounding, and and bubble of space, this is the, the major one. This is the, an, an essential step. And completing communications. And to be able to complete communications, you're going to start going into this edge of becoming on, uh, of being hooked, where you get hooked. You get hooked because what she said is not what you wanted to hear, or you didn't want to hear that feedback. And you're going to want to defend yourself or uh, blame her back or tell her that she's not right. And you wanted to prove yourself that you're right, and and all of this dynamic, and 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 that gonna trigger some feelings. So when you trigger some feelings, uh, this is your territory. Now you are in territory where you have a necessity for doing your inner navigation, navigating your uh, anger, sadness, fear, and joy. Navigating that territory, and doing this will open up doorways, uh, because you're probably gonna. Because you will find that you will start getting hooked, 
by the same things. You, the same things will happen and it's like, oh, I get hooked. Oh, I'm hooked again. Oh, I'm hooked again. And it's the same thing. And when this is a pattern, you're going to start noticing the pattern. And these are uh, emotional uh, doorway. These are doorways for emotional healing processes. So this is uh, an introduction into this. Um, yeah, this is essential. And I give you like the most essential. There is like this is like the okay, like boom. You don't know anything about this. You want to get better at this, like land in your body, center yourself, ground yourself, uh, get in your bubble space, uh, start looking at the world from this place, and start working with this completing completing of communication, so that you can get better, gain more capacity to listen, and to gain access to your own voice. Um, I'm going to leave it up to here. Uh, this is getting quite long already. Uh, so I want to really open up the space that this is not the end. The, if you can go to, you want to go to start over dot XYZ, there is a ton of resources there. I'm going to put a, a bunch of the links uh, in the description of this video. So you can check them out and you can see uh, th these next steps, these doorways that I've been opening here you're going to see there is practice spaces there are people currently practicing live uh, online and if uh, and some some of the practices are in, are in person so in in person practices and there is uh, experiments there for you to to do on your own and with teams and there is distinctions and more details more resources so you can go dive a little bit deeper in whatever which, whichever direction you feel called to do from what I share here. The next thing that I want to tell you about is uh, I'm, I created a community on school.com. This is a, a website uh, I, precisely for this, precisely for practicing these skills, for going into uh, teamwork uh, of pract and practice spaces for practicing space holding skills. So this is uh, becoming Becoming Center, which is the, the, the basic foundation, um, completing communication, becoming unhookable, making proposals, uh, asking, uh, declaring, um, creating clarity, speaking, uh, like practicing different forms of speaking. Uh, so the, the purpose of this community is to find your voice. I help like the purpose of this is for to help fathers find their voice. So that one, this community is $120 a month and you can subscribe there. And we have a, a weekly call uh, with uh, a weekly call. And there's also support group. That means that, that we work together. You can ask for possibilities. There is a, there's also a course there that goes deeper into how to source your feelings and work with your feelings where you get to make the, the, the old map of feelings and the new map of feelings and, and start the journey of transitioning to creating a new relationship with your feelings. And so there is a lot there in this community, a lot of space is only $120 a month. And if you feel called to continue this practice in a practice space with me, because we're having the, the weekly calls with me, I go and sign up for, for this community. I'm gonna leave also the link to, to get into it. And the uh, yeah and the, yeah there is also uh, there is also lots of cool stuff in that community, uh, and we get actually into a one on one call, so you get to actually get to to go in a one on one call with me. Uh, the the next thing that I want to tell you is if you feel called to work with me uh, on a one on one basis, I'm um, I have an uh, I want to um, have this special offering from this video to. Uh, to meet once a week in a space of uh, apprenticeship of space holding where you get to apprentice uh, with me some of the things that I have been learning about space holding and we get to go on a weekly call for getting more through the basics and going on from your necessity from your pain from your specific case and we get to work on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, once a week and and this will be also a training space, a practice space, a space for practicing. So you don't get to only listen to me or do this, but you actually get to practice these things that we're talking about here in simulation spaces. And I'm offering this for uh, uh, $1,200 a month. And 
ideally with a commitment to, to doing it for three months, that we do connect for three months. And this is the offering that I have here. So if you're interested in working on one-on-one -on -one with me and get to know yeah, like a lot of the other uh, essential tools, uh, send me a message about this and I will also leave a link for this. Uh, that's all that I got for now. I hope that this was uh, of value to you and that you got some gold from this. And thank you so much for doing this work, for taking your precious time to ex to get better, become a better father, or get better at creating the things that you want to create. You have a message that this world needs to hear. And I'm here to help that message come through and I'm taking a stand. I'm committed to this message that you have coming through. Uh, so thank you for taking the time for being here and I'll see you again in the next video. And thank you so much for, uh, for your time and bye for now.